302. I'm Jackie Ferris. This week, a bit of a variety show. We're going to bust out of jail. We're going to show you how to organize your craft. And then we're going to nosh on some ice cream. Get ready to rock and roll. The 302 is headed your way. Hey, 302, it's a trend that's sweeping the nation, scratch that, the world, escape rooms. We're joined now by Bill Wright with Axiom Escape Rooms to tell us a little bit about why this is just sweeping the nation. It's so fun. Bill, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about, first of all, the concept behind an escape room. Well, the concept is you ultimately have a goal that you need to achieve with the number of people that you go with, uh, whether it's public or it's private. So if you go with a private group, if there's three, four, or up to 10 of you, <clears throat> you're all actually working towards a common goal. And that goal from one theme to the next could be different. It could be just escaping, could be vanishing the Dark Lord, it could be saving Santa. But ultimately, that's what you're trying to do is get to the end game. Now, we are in the Shawshank escape room. Yeah, that's correct. Talk to me a little bit about what we have going on here. Well, this is a prison cell. Um, it's a little bit different because everybody not necessarily is in the same room. Uh, they're in individual cells, but they're in one large room. So they can work together uh, to solve puzzles in different cells, but they essentially have to get themselves out of each one of their cells in order for them to progress forward into the next room. So me and my friends are here. Maybe my husband and his friends are there. And so we have to escape and then come together to, to uh, go into the next room is what you're saying? That is right. Um, the dynamic of this room can sometimes be comical because one or two of the cells could get out before the other one. Um, they may have the ability to move forward and go into the warden's office. Sometimes they have to make that decision. Do they leave that person behind to try to work through their stuff while they continue to progress in another room? Or do they sacrifice that to get this person out so everybody moves together? Uh, that sometimes is really entertaining itself. Now, I know a lot of people at home have seen the, the movie um, Shawshank Redemption, which is what this is based off of loosely. Um, but you don't have to, to have the knowledge of the film or the, partic the particular subject matter, right, to, no. to be successful? there's just nuances so that there's an appreciation for the actual movie itself. Um, all of the puzzles that are in the room that you need to solve to progress do not require any outside knowledge whatsoever. So it's just a matter of coming in and using your head and looking for clues. Exactly. Exactly. Now you have a number of rooms. You have seven going at one time? That is correct. Talk to me about the different kinds that you have. Well, we have Sorcerer's Quest, uh, which is based off of Vanishing the Dark Lord. There's a lot of uh, wizardry, you know, making potions, using uh, magic wands, stuff of that nature to solve puzzles and to move forward. This one itself is a jail cell. You actually have to escape prison, get through the warden's office to get to your end game. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Criminal Capture, which is actually solving a crime. Uh, so you have to figure out who solved the crime, go through the clues, uh, which are based off of the original Zodiac um, crime story um, to get to the end of that room. We're building Mason's Temple, which is based off of the uh, Founding Fathers and the conspiracy theories that had to do with the Knights Templar. Mm -hmm. uh, so that one is like a, an underground, 300-foot underground tomb that you have to get through, mm -hmm. and you need to find the treasure to get mm -hmm. to the end of that one. Um, we have the fate of the North Pole. Uh, Santa Claus has been kidnapped oh, no. by one of the many known villains throughout our history uh, in the U.S. And you have to figure out which one of those villains uh, kidnapped him so that you can free Santa so you can save Christmas. Excellent. Now, can we go into the warden's office? We sure can. All right, let's do it. Okay. So this is the warden's office. It is. So there's so many different themes. How do you come up with all of this? I mean, what kind of research do you have to do? Well, we look for things that are attractive to the to the public, um, themes that people like, you know, like pirates and, you know, jail cells and magicians and sorcerers and stuff like that, uh, crimes, uh, and something that we can feed off of. The best way really to design a room is to actually come up with the design and the story first, 
and then build the puzzles around it so that they fit the actual scenario. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're trying to jam a story into a bunch of generic puzzles, and it doesn't really work that way. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep coming up with fresh ideas because there's a lot of competition out there. Absolutely, and you don't want to duplicate from one experience to the next. You know, no one wants to go to from a jail cell to you know a sorcerer's quest, but the puzzles look the same just with a different cover. Uh, so you really have to keep coming up with original ideas. So whenever people talk about escape rooms, there might be an element of fear in it, but you can walk out anytime, right? Anytime. You know, you're not allowed to restrict egress. Uh, so you, we can't lock any of the doors. We never have. Uh, so at any time, you can always walk out to either just leave or make a phone call or use the restroom, what have you. So for fire safety reasons, none of the doors are locked. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, there are monitors that give you clues and there are cameras in the room so that if something were to happen or if you needed something, you know, you guys are right there. Absolutely. You know, every room has full surveillance. You know, we have staff that actually watch us from the control room. It's to monitor your progress so we can essentially send a clue if you get stuck and you just can't figure something out in the room because mm -hmm. we don't want anybody stuck on one thing for the entire experience. We want everybody to enjoy as much of it as they can. But yet, absolutely, from the safety standpoint, if something happens or we see something that we don't like, um, somebody can absolutely act on it and, and come right in and you know give any assistance if needed. So a lot of people are having fun with this. I know that uh, team building. Talk to me about the kinds of people that... Um, come to the escape rooms here? The demographic is huge. Uh, you know, when we originally built this, we were really after adult entertainment because the kids have a lot of stuff to do already. But we come to find out that it's really a, a great family activity. So we get anything from like six to 76 years old and everything in between. In addition to that, because of the type of team building and communication and thing, collaboration that you have to do, uh, companies leverage that for team building. Um, so from birthday parties to just a night out, having a good time, a date night, we've had proposals, corporate team building, uh, anniversaries, you name it, we've seen it in the years that we've been here. Now, if somebody wants to come and have some fun with their friends or their significant other or propose, where do they go to get information and how much does it cost roughly? The easiest way to gain information is to go to the website. Um, you can go to axiomescaperooms.com. You can choose from one of our many locations um, of where you'd like to go. You can see the themes of those rooms, full description of difficulty. Prices are there as well. Um, here in Wilmington, it's 25 for adults, 20 for students and children. Um, so they can gain all that information from there. We also have information on Facebook. Everybody's welcome to come in and, and take a look at the experience themselves. We can always answer any questions at the desk. But what's definitely most convenient is to just go to the website because it's extremely informative. It's very seamless to book an experience from start to finish. Um, and this way here you can reserve the experience, the date, and the time that you want so that you can plan your life around it. Alrighty, Bill. Thank you so much. And Thank we're you. looking forward to trying it out. It we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Governor Carney, and I want you to be part of 302. Hey, 302. We are in a basement in Wilmington, Delaware that has been transformed. You know the trend, organizing or tidying up because of Netflix. Well, this is 302 style. We're joined now by Sue Frost, who is a CPO. And what exactly is a CPO? It's a certified professional organizer. Now, you're the only one in Delaware, right? That's right. Now, you're her client is Holly, and this is her basement. Holly, thank you very much for joining us. Sue, thanks for joining us as well. Thank you. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, what the challenge was. What was this room before you guys started? Well, Holly called me, and she wanted a little help with organization. She's a very busy woman. Um, so we started with this room, and this room was somewhat of a storage area, and she determined that this was going to be her gift area. And it would be used for some of the kids' projects and photos, family photos. Mm -hmm. So we came into the room, determined what would be stationed where. We created stations for her to work. Right behind us, this is the workspace, and she's surrounded by her family, as you can nice. see. We created a stand-up file. I'll let Holly tell you what we did there. 
Yeah, that's been a really great place to keep any of the ideas I get throughout the year for gifts for others, for the kids, where I could just tear an idea out of a catalog and put it in there, and then I know I have a go-to place. Because a lot of this was how to keep this out of this, the view of my children, mm -hmm. as they would be too curious if it were all sitting around. So it was a nice, safe, and secure place to, to keep these ideas. Now, we have seen the before picture, and it seemed like you had a lot of stuff just kind of stacked. I did. Talk about, you know, the challenge of bringing somebody in. I mean, you decided that you were going to just get everything taken care of. Well, I kept thinking, I'm an organized person. I can do this. And I would start these projects and then would get caught into... You know, looking at the photos and then an hour would go by and I would have an unfinished project that I would be frustrated that I didn't get done. So by bringing Sue in and having a professional help me map out how to use the time, how to make these decisions, I ended up with a much more usable space and from there could actually complete any projects or get, um, you know, get that feeling of completion and um, and in other well in other rooms I would be able to purchase furniture or do things that would en enable me to design a better use for the space that I couldn't until the clutter was organized. Now Sue, how exactly did um, you facilitate this? I mean, do you have any tips and tricks for us for the folks at home who maybe are like, okay, I'm going to try to be like Sue and Holly? Well. First, we talked, we talk a lot, I listen more, about how she wanted to use the space. So she said, yes, I want to have my gifts here, I want to store my gifts in categories, I want a space for wrapping, I also want a space for the kids' um, art and for photos. So we created stations for those, and then we methodically went through the room from one end of the room to the other and took out anything that did not belong in this room, anything that was just to be let go of, anything that was donations, um, and anything that belonged in another area of the house, and we just set that in a pile instead of running it to that area. We just stayed here and worked our way through the room until those categories, those stations were created mm -hmm. um, without distracting ourselves. Sure. Sure. So you get everything kind of organized into piles, but how do you, it's one thing to have it in the piles and organized that way, mm -hmm. how do you translate that into shelves that are functional? Well, fortunately, um, Holly had these nice shelves that were here already. And this is, and she had some organizing tools. I always like to look at what people have before we go out and buy because sometimes the tools are right here and the money doesn't need to be spent. Mm -hmm. So then we looked at, well, what do you want to handle? What will you handle more often? You want to, the things that you need most or more often, easy to reach. Mm -hmm. The things that you'll use less frequently are up and further away okay. from reach. So this is what I'd call prime real estate. Sure. And anything that's heavier also, it doesn't really apply in this space, but if we were in a kitchen, maybe a heavy crock pot, you know, you want here rather than having to bend down or store sure. it overhead where it might be a hazard to bring it down every time you use that. So we always consider where you're placing something. So the more frequently you use something, you want it closer. You want like items together. And um, so things are more likely to be, or easier to retrieve, easier to put away, the more mm -hmm. likely it is to happen. We're all creatures of habit. So we want to make organizing easy to maintain. That's the bottom line. So let me see if, I, if I'm hearing uh, the tips and tricks that I can use at my home. If it doesn't belong in a space, remove it from the space. Exactly. The more you use it, the more accessible. The less you use it, maybe put it a little bit further back. Now, as far as, uh, I guess, the concept of things bringing you joy, do you believe in that kind of, uh, I guess, philosophy? I know that the Netflix show is all about, if it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. What, what's your philosophy? Well, of course, we all want things that bring us joy. We certainly pick those things out of the closet, but there's also utility. A mm -hmm. lot of things that are in this room serve utility. Mm -hmm. um, our tools, uh, things that we use in the kitchen or, or things that we use in our garage. So I say both, that if you're looking for things to purge or keep that 
yes, you want something that's beautiful, or if it's heartfelt, it means something special to you. I'll never get rid of my grandfather's copy of The Catcher in the Rye, sure. but also it has to be useful. And then if it doesn't serve any of those needs, then we're just storehousing it. Sure. Now, I know at the beginning we didn't say the name of your company, which is Organize My Life, Redesign My World. And if yes. somebody wants to reach out to you, hire you, talk to you, whatever, where can they contact you? OrganizeMyLife.net, and it's 302-415-2317. Excellent. Sue, thank you very Great much for spending you. time for us. And thank thank you. you very much, Holly. And, of course, hopefully we've all learned some things, and we're going to check back in with Sue a little bit later in the season. We'll be right back. and 302 wakes me up in the morning. Hey 302, we are at Rockwood Museum talking about a subject that everybody loves, ice cream and the ice cream festival. We're joined now by Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer to talk about it. Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Everybody loves ice cream and this is a perfect place to check it out. That's right. I'm telling you, Stop eating today, stop eating for the next few days, and then June 29th, June 29th, Saturday, if it rains, Sunday, June 30th, come on out and eat your heart out at the ice cream festival. So what can someone expect if they've, if they've never been, or maybe it's been a couple of years since they've been out? What, what's going to happen when they come out? Well, you know, you come and you come for the ice cream. First of all, for kids 12 and under, they can come in for free. For adults, it's only five bucks. I should mention kids who come with an adult, you can't come unaccompanied but it's only five dollars to get in for adults then you come in and there are all sorts of leading ice cream vendors from the region from U Dairy Creameries which is the top you know student-based Newark amazing uh, ice cream maker to Woodside Creamery which is one of Delaware's finest you can come out buy some great ice cream but there's other stuff to do as well I love ice cream as much as anyone uh, everyone who works with me knows that but actually my favorite favorite thing at the ice cream festival is not ice cream. It's bubbles, right? Bubbles. Graham pop bubbles. So I don't get to do bubbles much anymore. I did them a lot as a kid. You know, you dip the stick in and sure. you, you blow and it makes a nice little bubble. With bubble technology today, they're making bubbles as big as Rockwood Museum where we're sitting right now. It's huge bubbles. You would not believe, you would say, oh my God, I can not only put my kid in this bubble, I can put my whole family in this bubble. Of course you can't, the bubble would pop. But it's a huge opportunity, not just for kids, but a few, you know, adventurous adults to make with Grandpa Bubbles some of the biggest bubbles you've ever seen. It's a really good time, uh, particularly for kids. But it's, that's not the only thing that people can do. And this is kind of, this is a big deal. People get dressed for this. Talk about the social aspect so of this. So when the Ice Cream Festival started about four decades ago, it was started to help fund a great, great community institution. That is Rockwood Park, where you can come, by the way, year round and uh, get a ghost tour, see some of the ghosts that lurk in the Rockwood Museum. And I encourage people to do that. But this is a great opportunity, a, a one day event through the year for us to contribute to the museum. We have great, spot, great uh, donors to the, the festival. WSF Vest Bank and Capano Management are our leading uh, donors this year. And it enables people to come and just celebrate as a community, this incredible community facility. Because it's about ultimately about Rockwell Museum, we decided to do something this year we have not done in years, and that is make it an old-fashioned ice cream festival. The, the museum and gardens here, they were uh, lived in by families throughout the 18th and 19th century and into the 20th century, so we're going to have people there dressed like they're in that time period. We're calling it the old-fashioned ice cream festival, so you can go to the ice cream parlor and eat just like it was a hundred years ago on these very same grounds. Now these people, will they be able to share some of the history with the visitors? Yeah, sure. Of course, there will be plenty of opportunities to come and learn the history, and there will be people dressed up some surprising ways that didn't exist a hundred years ago. You might even see some people that look like people that lived here a hundred years ago, but they'll be walking on stilts. They'll be doing some crazy, creative, crazy things, maybe a little juggling. Maybe even they'll be on stilts juggling, blowing really, really, really big bubbles. Now, I understand there's going to be a lot of entertainment as well, not just the gentleman on stilts and the bubbles, but actual music. Yeah, two really big things. We're having local music performers come, really top, top-notch 
local performers come. I should mention it starts at 12. It goes until 9, I think, because in addition to the music, for the first time in 12 years, for the first time in 12 years, there are going to be fireworks at night. Wow. Wow. So that'll be a, a treat. It's like an all-day event. You can bring your family. Uh, and you mentioned that the admission prices were very affordable. That's right. Uh, the idea is to make it for kids, for adults, regardless of the age, we're going to have something for you to do. Most importantly, eat ice cream. Exactly. And, and who doesn't love to eat ice cream? Uh, is, there, is there a favorite uh, ice cream among the people that visit, or does it kind of... So I, I'm not going to judge. I will tell you there are seven leading local ice cream vendors who, who will be here. And my goal is to eat a cone from each of the seven. That's why it's really important that starting today, you go on a little diet for a well, few see, days, you no, get ready. There's no calories uh, at the ice cream festival. Yeah, that, that is true. The weather is always beautiful here at Rockwood, and there, there are no calories. That's right. Now, in case something happens, in case we do have rain, is there a rain date? Rain date is the following day, Sunday, June 30th, same exact time, 12 p.m., uh, 12 noon until 9 o'clock at night. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's fun for everyone. The idea is that the county supports opportunities for get out, to get out, have a good time, Eat some sweet stuff, blow big bubbles. Everybody have a good time together in a safe environment. Sure, and at the same time, it gets people out to check out the grounds and the museum and, and the carriage house and everything. Just a really beautiful property out here. That's right. It's one of our largest parks and really one of the greatest museums in the region. So it's a great opportunity for us to celebrate something that's really owned by everyone in the county. Now, if someone wants to get more information about everything that we just talked about, where do they go? Who do they contact? Well, I encourage you to go to nccde.org, nccde.org, and you'll see all of our events in addition to the ice cream festival. We're always looking for volunteers for events, so it costs five bucks to get in. If you're like, hey, that's a little hefty, you can come work for a few hours and get in for free. Sure. So it's on the 29th, June 29th, from noon until 9 when the fireworks happen. That's right. Excellent. Matt, thank you so much. Thank for you joining so much. Us. I appreciate, appreciate seeing you on the 29th. And remember, let's start dieting today so that we can eat our zero calorie ice cream, at least seven scoops. At on least, June 29th. at least seven scoops. All right, thank you. Thank we'll you. be right back. Well, that'll do it for this blustery edition of The 302. Be sure to check us out on the internet at the 302 at metv2.com. We're going to leave you with a beauty shot of the riverfront. Until next time, we'll see you on The 302.